First thing I'm going to do is copy the path to my project so when I get into Atom that I can clone this. So now if I go under view and pull up the command palette, I can type in git clone and now I can put that in. So this is how we clone it to our computer or and typically I'll put it in our user folder and GitHub wants to make a GitHub folder and it will then put it in that location. Having screwed around with changing that directory a few times, I found it's almost easier just to leave it and let it just all go into that user GitHub folder because that's where it wants to go and that just keeps things simpler right now. So I would recommend you do that. So now I'm going to hit clone and it clones it into that folder. I just Minimize those. So now we can see here is that project. Here is the readme that goes along with that. So in my administrator, go to my GitHub folder. We can see there is how it works. And that folder is ready for me to put content into. So now if I were to make a new file, and I'll save it. Administrator, GitHub, how it works. We'll just save it in that location. It's good to go. And give it some content. This will be index from school. Save that. Now, we can go ahead and use our little uh, uh, GitHub tab over here, stage. Add in our commit. Now, if I want, I can now go and push this up onto GitHub so that it's there. And Octocat was thinking down there, so now I know it's I know it's done. So I've now pushed this file up onto GitHub. If I refresh the page here, we'll see the index is there and that change has occurred. So this is the core workflow that we've looked at and used thus far and it seems that you know it works. But we can run into a problem. So if I have this folder and first, uh, I'm just going to close it out of GitHub for a moment. Now let's say that this folder, if I use this folder at school because the school computers with deep freeze nuke everything that you've left on them when they restart. So if I restart this computer, it goes away. So then I can just clone it down again. Copy that. Go into GitHub. Git clone. Paste. Put it in. It's there. It still shows that index and we're good to go. So if that is now my school version of this, let's say I get to my home computer, but first I'm going to close that window because we'll be doing some fun here. I'm just renaming that folder right now school. So now if I get to my home computer, fire up Adam, like, all right, let's, let's do some work here on my home computer and that, that'll be good. <coughs> and get clone. Let's try again, get clone. Paste it in, clones it in. So now we can see I have the school one and now I have my home one here. So if I work on the home one and do some work, make some changes. So let's say in the home one, we add another file. Let's call it home index and save that. So now we have saved that in. 
You can see, all right, well, I can stage that, and let's add in a message. And let's say, okay, we make some changes, we do some a couple commits, but we don't ever get around to pushing it up because we didn't for whatever reason. But we don't push it up. Now, if I'm back at school and I clone out onto my school computer here, I could do some work and work with it. And so now we can see though that this doesn't match because this only has the one file, the other one has the two files. So which one is going to be more correct? So we're thinking the one with two files is the one I want. And if I have the one with two files here, if I do push that one up, oh, let's try again. Okay, now oh, it, it did push now because there's no message down at the bottom so we can see that there's no little one next to the arrows so it's telling me it's now been pushed. But now if I work on this other one here and maybe add in a paragraph, hi, save that, pull up my git tab, stage that, commit, update my index, well, commit, now I go to push, And we get a message. It says push rejected. The tip of your current branch is behind your remote counterpart. So you can either force this before pushing or we're going to have to try and pull before we push. So when we get the red message telling us that our current folder is behind. So if I try and push, it's going to give me unhappiness. And we either have to force push it holding down Command on Mac or Control on Windows while we click on the push button. Or what we have to do is pull down the most recent copy from GitHub. So now if I pull it down and said, hey, look, there's another file here. Okay, that's great. Now let me push up. Octocat's thinking down at the bottom. There's no more numbers telling me that we're good to go on the pushing and pulling. And if we go look on GitHub and refresh the page, we'll see both files are there. We can see that the school index has the paragraph high in it. So yeah, we know it's working. But if I go back home to work on this, on my home project here. We'll see it's not updated, but a good practice, if you've done work at school on the school computer, and then when you get home, if you open up your local copy instead of just cloning down a new one, which cloning a project right now when it's only like two, three files and they're relatively small is not a big deal. But if your project is hundreds of files and thousands of lines of code, if you hit clone every time, that can be, uh, well, you gotta go take a coffee break for a while, which isn't a bad thing, but if you're in a hurry, then that gets tedious. So the recommended practice is to pull down and grab the most current changes and we can go, it magically refreshed right before my very eyes. I pushed pull, it pulled from GitHub the most current version of the project, so now it's ready to work on it. So push and pull, pay attention to the messages. 
If you see numbers on push and pull, that tells you that it knows there's a change on one end, either the remote end, if it's a number under pull, or if the numbers are on push, that's telling you how many updated files that you will be pushing up to get help.